Calm your mind by changing your environment. Hello, and welcome to another edition of Shine 365, where our job is to make your life a little bit better. Today's article comes from Greater Good Magazine. We'll be reviewing the article by Kira M. Newman. It's entitled, Calm a Distressed Mind by Changing Your Environment. One of the biggest contributors to our happiness is something we barely pay attention to. And that is the voice inside our heads, the voice inside our heads. This morning I took a walk and I've been having some pain. I damaged some muscles in my back. And during the walk, I thought, wow, maybe I'm going a little too far. Maybe I'm doing a little too much. Maybe it's too early. Maybe I should have eased into this a little bit. As soon as these worries came into my head, my back started hurting more and more. And I thought, wow, now it really hurts. But a lot of that pain could have been in my mind. Let's go a little deeper here. As psychologist Ethan Cross describes in his new book, Chatter, that voice, the voice in your head, that voice is constantly analyzing the situations we're in, reflecting on the past and the future and telling us who we are. While sometimes it's friendly and optimistic, you know, sometimes your voice is saying, okay, everything's going to work out. It can also be critical and downbeat. Our inner voice can berate us for mistakes or decide life is going down the tubes, basically. You know, maybe our life is ruined. It can ruminate on negative emotions and experiences, dredging them up without any kind of constructive resolution. So I'm on my walk, I'm feeling a lot of pain, and I think, wow, I might not be able to walk back home. This might be too much pain. I have to maybe call someone. I'm too far from home. I walk too far. I don't know how far I am. I don't know exactly where I am. I overdid it. But you know what? I took a moment. I stepped away from what I was doing. I sat down in the shade of a tree where it was a lot cooler, and I let my mind calm down. And the pain started to go away. According to Krauss, there are three main ways we can turn down the chatter in our heads. We can shift our perspective so we're not so immersed in our own problems. We need to talk to others. We need to get support. And here's the main thing. We need to change the environment around us. Krauss offers tips on how to step back and gain some distance from your problem. And then maybe share your problem with other people. Don't just keep it bottled up inside. And then, here's the big thing, change our environment. And that is something we can do proactively. And when we change our environment, we're going to change our perspective, perhaps. We become embedded in our physical spaces. And different features of those spaces activate psychological forces inside us which affect how we think and feel. If we make smart choices about how we relate to our surroundings, they can help us control our inner voice. Let's dive into this. Surround yourself with nature. Now on my walk, I was surrounded by nature. I was walking in a neighborhood, but I was surrounded by nature. But when I sat down under the tree and just relaxed and started to just take some breaths and look around I saw the birds and this bird this little green bird flew up and he landed right next to me and he had a worm in his mouth and when I was thinking about the bird of course it took me away from the pain it relaxed me I wasn't taking in my environment until I literally sat down and looked around when I was walking I was in my own head but when I was sitting under the tree I was taking in what was around me and it relaxed me and it helped me. Nature seems to buffer 
against the stress we experience in life. For example, one study in the United Kingdom found that being exposed to green spaces, and I know we've said this and we will be saying this in other episodes, but green spaces protect people from the harmful effects of poverty on their health. In another study, poor residents in urban public housing felt that the obstacles in their life were less severe and more solvable when their apartment looked out onto greenery rather than a cityscape. I live in a beautiful space, in a beautiful place, in a beautiful part of the world. And I have nature all around me. I do have to drive there. I can't necessarily walk there. But I've noticed that when I drive out away from people, away from civilization, away from cement sidewalks, away from buildings, and I sit in nature and I just think it relaxes me. And I think, you know, I, I found a tide pool by the ocean and I sat in that tide pool and there was actually fish swimming around me in that tide pool. And I thought, what would be better? Sitting in a jacuzzi at a hotel, at a big resort with hundreds of people all around me by the pool or sitting in this tide pool surrounded by nature. And I thought, I'm not paying for this. I'm not paying for this tide pool. I drove here. I spent some money in gas. And then I got out of my car. I walked to the tide pool and I sat in the tide pool. And I saw the miracle of God's creation in this tide pool. It was beautiful. There was fish swimming around me. The water temperature was perfect. The sun was out, but it wasn't too bright. The breeze blew against me to cool me down. And it was amazing. And it's calming me down just thinking about it. Because it was a magical moment in my life. Nature getting away to nature can help you get rid of anxiety, can help you think clearly. And I'm going to say this over and over again because it's so important. Nature is free. If you can get out in nature, you can clear your mind. You can change things inside your head. And you can improve your quality of life. Let's get back to this. So why is nature so soothing? Well, a 2015 study provides a clue. When participants spent 90 minutes walking through grasslands, they reported ruminating less than those who walked through busy city streets. Not only that, but their brain scans, they actually did brain scans, showed less activity in networks that support rumination. So you're not ruminating about negative things or how crazy your life is. You're just opening your mind to what's around you. Being around nature influences our habitual thought patterns. So this research is relevant. In fact, skip down. Other studies suggest that you can get some of the attention improving and stress reducing benefits of nature just by looking at photos. Okay. You don't even have to get in the car. You don't even have to drive to the place. You don't have to find a tide pool by the ocean. You don't have to drive to the lake. All you have to do is open up a magazine of pictures of nature, and that's going to help you. That, that couldn't be easier. Of course, it's going to be better to drive to a natural location, but if you can't, look at pictures. There are great opportunities for awe. Because the world is an amazing place. There's amazing things happening in nature. It's an amazing planet that we live on. I can't stress this enough. Being in nature, in the face of the tall trees, being in nature with breathtaking views, we often experience the sense of awe. The feeling of being in the presence of something vast that challenges our understanding of the world because believe it or not, our understanding of the world is very limited. But nature isn't the only thing that can invoke awe, Krauss explains. We can feel awe when we read poetry, when we listen to music, when we watch great 
athletic feats or even toddlers memorable firsts awe is considered a self-transcendent emotion and it allows people to think and feel beyond their own needs and wants the operative power of awe is its ability to make us feel smaller nudging us to cede control of our inner voice to a greater grander we are not in charge we may think we're in charge but we're small in comparison to the planet in comparison to the solar system in comparison to the galaxy we're very small when we feel awe we show less anxiety in brain areas involved with self-focus and mind wandering awe almost automatically makes our problems feel smaller and gives us that broader perspective without us having to engage directly with the problems at all one study took volunteers on a river rafting trip i love river rafting they found that the more they experienced awe on this trip the better the improvements in their stress levels river rafting i don't know if you can do it in your area if you've ever done it it is awe inspiring i have done it several times it it can make your month it can make your year do it safely do it with a guide but river rafting helps you explore nature it really makes you feel grateful for what you have around you as you're traveling through the river with other people you're experiencing awe inspiring moments with other people and it's just amazing i can't i can't recommend it enough so what does this awe inspiring environment look like well it's probably different for everyone but it might mean putting up art if you can't get out in nature put art up if you can't find natural pictures play some music that transports you and be sure to unplug from your technology to notice the beauty get out there and do something in nature and you'll notice your anxiety goes away your depression lessens the pain you might be having lessens if you can't do it pick up a magazine look at things in nature we all can do this we all can improve our lives we are, have been given the gifts of the planet nature is all around us and it is amazing Thank you again for tuning in. Make sure to watch us every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. Please give a thumbs up to help the algorithm. We look forward to seeing you next time on Shine 365.